Hey there. Now that we have a good feeling for what a horizontal asymptote is and why it happens, how they work, we're going to talk about what's called an oblique asymptote. It's sometimes called a slant asymptote due to the fact that it's a diagonal line. Um, now we're also going to talk about this. So please, please have a, a couple of these things in your head as we go through. Number one, you, you really got to know what a horizontal asymptote is and when you get them. Um, this video, the last video, and the next video are all dealing with what is called end behavior of a rational function. And there's really only three cases. You have a horizontal asymptote, either at zero or a constant. You have a diagonal line asymptote, it's called an oblique or a slant, or you have just regular old end behavior. We're gonna model that. So we're kind of in the second, second phase of this. So when we talk about an oblique asymptote of a rational function, there's a few things I want you to know. One was I just told you. The second thing is you're gonna to have to know how to do long division of polynomials, not just synthetic division. So if you ignored me when I showed all that stuff, it's time to go back and rewatch that because you can't do this with synthetic division. You have to have long division, which is why I taught it to you. Uh, most of the times we did, I did both when, when possible. So here's when you're gonna have an oblique asymptote. And we talked about end behavior last video. We understand hopefully that a horizontal asymptote happens, horizontal asymptote happens when the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator, that's y equals zero, x-axis, or equal to the numerator, that's gonna be a constant. The leading coefficients will tell you that. So what happens when the numerator starts being larger? So notice, horizontal asymptote takes care of all the cases where the denominator is equal to or greater than the numerator. The oblique asymptote and end behavior take care of the cases where the numerator is bigger than the denominator as far as degree. If they're equal, remember if they're equal, you get a horizontal asymptote at a constant that's not zero. If the numerator starts being larger, we really only have two cases. The first one is the oblique asymptote, and the next one would be just straight up end behavior. So what happens when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more? So the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator by exactly one. This is when you're going to get an oblique asymptote. An oblique asymptote is a diagonal line that your function is going to approach. So as x gets positive infinity, maybe you have diagonal lines just like y equals x or something, as x gets positive infinity, this function is going to get closer to a diagonal line. And as x approaches negative infinity, it's getting closer to a diagonal line. It's gonna follow that diagonal line for infinity and beyond. Um, so that, that's what an oblique asymptote does. It's very much like a horizontal, it's just, it's just a diagonal line, it's same thing. Um, why that is, Think about this for a second before we get into it. If the degree of the numerator is larger by one, then what we're going to have by our leading terms, you have something to power functions that you could simplify and you'd end with like three x to the first power. Three x to the first power is a line, has a slope of three. We're also gonna have one more step, long division, but that's why this is happening, is because if the degree of the numerator is larger by one, you, you divide, you get a line, and that's gonna model the end behavior of this function. That's why it happens. A couple of notes, I mentioned a couple of them. Number one, we really have to know long division of polynomials. I'm only doing one example in this video because we'll be practicing it later on. I'm just gonna show you how to do that one time. Uh, but we've already talked about long division of polynomials. Also, you might hear this called a slant asymptote from time to time, that's informal. Uh, the formal is oblique asymptote, and that's what I'm gonna be using, but you might hear it called a slant or a diagonal asymptote because it is just a, a diagonal line. Uh, horizontal was already taken care of, now we're on diagonal. So let's go ahead, oh yeah, last one. Kind of covering it up, I make a better door than a window, I guess. Um, you can't have both a horizontal and an oblique. Now think about just the degrees for a second and that's gonna make sense to you. If your degrees are equal, you have horizontal. If the degree of denominator is bigger, you have horizontal at y equals zero. Um, if the degree of the numerator is larger by one, you have oblique. You can't have both a numerator that has a larger degree than a denominator and at the same time have equal or denominator larger. That, that's impossible, so you went to a contradiction. Therefore, you cannot have both a horizontal and an oblique. It is one or the other or none, and then you just have end behavior. So you fall into one of three cases here. Horizontal, constant, or zero. Oblique, diagonal line, or just straight up end behavior. You're not gonna have all of them. You just have just one of them, and it's based on the degree. So it's based on end behavior. So let's take a look at it. 
We do something different um, with an oblique asymptote than we do with other end behaviors. You see, normally, we take a look at this and go, all right, well, what's going to happen? Our end behavior is going to be modeled by our leading terms. We studied this in the last video. And because leading terms are always power functions, the variables will always simplify. So you go, all right, well, yeah, this is going to give us just simply 3x. Well, well what, what is that? What happens as x approaches infinity? Oh, as x approaches infinity, positive infinity, our function approaches, let's see, plug in big numbers here. Uh, three times really big positive numbers are really big positive numbers. This also approaches positive infinity, okay? As x approaches negative infinity, what's our function doing? We're doing limits, by the way. This is a, the introduction to sort of what limits do. What happens as x gets really big negatively? Well, three times really large negative numbers, I know that's kind of backwards, but we're going to use that, that, that terminology for now. As x gets really big, absolute value, negative numbers, well, this is going to get to negative infinity. Three times really big negative numbers are really, really big negative numbers. That's going to be negative infinity. And it will follow this line with a slope of 3. Remember, 3x three has a slope of 3. Power 1 would be a diagonal line. That's exactly what this function is going to follow. However, there's one more step we have to do to get the, the actual line. You see, this, is, this has the slope, right? This, this is 3, that's great, but we're missing a y-intercept. So you can't draw this diagonal line without knowing the y-intercept. The y-intercept comes from doing long division. So long story made short, this is still end behavior. It's obviously not a horizontal asymptote because as x approaches infinity, our function's not getting close to zero. It's not getting close to a constant. It's getting close to infinity and negative infinity. It's just going to happen along a diagonal line. So we're going to look at how to deal with that diagonal line. So this all comes from our, um, our long division of polynomials. Um, if you do notice, this makes sense, by the way. If you look at our degree, the degree here is 4. The degree here is 3. 4 is exactly 1 more than 3. If you have a question right now, because I, I know it pops into my head, what if this were 5? Well, then you would get x squared x squared is not a diagonal line. x squared is a parabola. That's going to be our next video on end behavior. So we're, we'll deal with that. This is only the case when our degree on the numerator is larger by 1. What if this was 3? Well, then you get just 3. Oh, wait, that's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. That's the last video. Right now, again, we're just dealing with when degree here is 1 more than that one. That's why I'm only doing one example because there's really only one thing that we do with this. Now, what we do with it is we take... And we're just going to divide it. So we take our, a look at our numerator. That's 3x to the fourth minus x squared. Long division of polynomials needs like, kind of like a place value for all of your missing exponents of x. So we're going to start with 3x to the fourth. We don't have any x cubes, but we need a place for it. Just like we need a place for the 0x and the 0, because there's no constant as well. We actually could factor the numerator, but that's not the point of what we're doing here. We're trying to figure out what our oblique asymptote is going to look like, what the, the, the function is of that, that asymptote. Now, on our denominator, this is what we're dividing by. If you remember, long division of polynomials works just with your leading terms. And here's something else I'm going to tell you. While this looks really crazy, I know it's intimidating. You go, oh my gosh, this is going to take absolutely forever. It's not. Please, please listen. Man, rewind the video and pause it if you have to. Just really focus here. Here's what you're trying to get. What you're trying to get is y equals mx plus b. So we only need to do this exactly two times. You're going to divide your first term by your first term, and you're going to get 3x. 
you'll distribute, subtract, and divide your first term by your first term, and then you are done. I'll show you exactly when to stop. You need to go no further at all, so don't worry about it. You're not, I don't care what the remainder is. I do not care at all. All we're trying to get to is what the MX plus B form, or the slope intercept form of our oblique asymptote is. So it's just two iterations of long division. It's not that hard. So we're gonna take our first term. So three X to the fourth, Divide by x cubed, and you're going to get 3x. Let me ask you a question and see if you're thinking. Are you always, in this case, are you always going to get constant x to the first power? Constant x to the, or well, co constant coefficient, x to the first power. In other words, are you always going to get a power 1 for your first term here? Yes, because you would not be doing this unless this degree was exactly 1 more than that one. If this degree is exactly one more than that one, every single time you divide long division for an oblique asymptote, every time, this will be one more than this, and you will get something to the first power there. Every time. That's why, if the degree is one larger, you're going to get an oblique asymptote, for sure. Because if this is one larger than that, when you divide it, you'll get a power one, and a power one is always a diagonal line. Hey, that needs to make sense. So are you always going to get something to the x to the first power here? Yes, you are. Otherwise, you shouldn't be doing this uh, because oblique asymptotes only happen if the degree of the numerator is larger by 1 than the denominator. And if that's not the case, you have horizontal or other end behavior. You don't even have to do this. So yes. Now we're going to distribute. So we don't have an x to the, uh, oh, sorry, we do have an x to the third. Good thing we put that there. And then we have, we don't have an x squared. We have a 3x. So I'm going to double check this. 3x times x to the third is 3x to the fourth. That looks good. 3x times negative x squared is negative 3x to the third. Got that. Uh, 3x times 1 is 3x, not x squared. So I'm, I'm leaving that as a 0x squared. When we subtract, what we're going to get is, Remember that when we subtract, we're subtracting term by term. So 3x to the 4th minus 3x to the 4th, that's 0, that's what we want to happen. But 0x to the 3rd minus a negative, that's adding. You're subtracting a negative, that's 3x to the 3rd. Honestly, I don't even care about this. It, it does not matter. It doesn't make a difference because here's what we're eating. If you want to, you know what? I just really want to be complete. So minus x squared and minus 3x. Yeah, great, but it doesn't matter. All we are looking for is this next term. That's it, I promise you that's all that matters. So when you take a look at three x to the third, you really don't need this. You go, okay, here's my first term. Remember, long division polynomials works first term divided by first term. Three x to the third divided by x to the third, that will simplify and that will give you positive 3. You're done. Don't distribute. Don't subtract. This is irrelevant. All you're looking for is this right here. So our oblique asymptote our oblique asymptote is y equals 3x plus 3. Here's what that means. If I were to graph 3x plus 3, it's a y-intercept of 0, 3. That's a slope of 3 over 1, so up 3 over 1. That's about like that. Our graph, our function right here, is going to follow that as we get toward x equals positive negative infinity. It's going to look like a diagonal line. So most of the time, it's going to have a, at least one vertical asymptote. So I was going to uh, cross the x-axis. So what we're going to get right here is we're going to get sort of a look like probably, I can't even do it with my hands, like this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of come up and then do this at, at the end behavior. So it's going to follow that diagonal line as we get way out there, it's going to be doing this. That's what's going to happen. So we know this line, that way we can put it on our graph and we say, oh yeah, my function is going to follow that. Now, here's another point that I wanted to make. I did it with horizontal asymptotes. Um, can you cross an oblique asymptote? Yes, you can. It's not a vertical asymptote. It acts kind of like a horizontal flipped on its, it kind of just tilted a little bit. 
uh, slanted a little bit. So yeah, you can, you can cross it as many times as the function allows, but at the end behavior, it's gonna be following that. So that's why we wanted to graph this so that we know what our function looks like as we go toward the ends of our, our x-axis, positive and negative infinity. And that's exactly how we do it. So long story, hopefully shorter, is uh, take a look. If this is bigger than this by exactly one, you know you're gonna get an oblique asymptote, but you have to do long division. It's only two steps. First term divide by first term, distribute, subtract, and first term divide by first term, and then you're done. Don't even distribute, don't need to subtract. This is your oblique asymptote. So I hope that makes sense. We're gonna come back, do another video on end behavior, just end behavior when oblique and horizontal asymptotes are out of the picture. And then we're gonna start um, practicing for one video and then we'll do some, uh, some graphing. All right, hope you're having fun.